In this video, I'm going to do a little mini lesson for the beginning of day 12, the atomic bombs. First, let's go over the chart and graph where you can answer the question, what was one result of fighting in the Pacific Theater during World War II? Let's take a look at both of these a little bit more closely. So the chart talks about three battles that happened in the Pacific Theater. Remember that the Pacific Theater refers to the area of war where the U.S. was fighting the, the Japanese. So this chart shows us the casualties from three battles. And in these three battles, you can see the U.S. lost a little under 100,000 or injured a little under 100,000. And the Japanese almost 200,000 casualties just in these three battles. But when you look at the map, you can see that there were definitely more than those three battles that took place. For example, Midway and Pearl Harbor, which took place a little bit earlier. So what information can you gather from this chart and the map? Well, straightforwardly, we can see that hundreds of thousands of US and Japanese soldiers died in the Pacific in the battles in the Pacific theater. And a little bit more closely, we can see that Pacific islands and areas in Asia were falling to Japanese control. Let's take a look again. So everything that's purple is under Japanese control. And so that includes the Philippines, which you can see is controlled by the United States. And it, it also includes areas of China. And there's other areas that were controlled by allied powers like Britain, but are now under the control of Japan. And so this is going to be a big deciding factor on whether the United States is going to pursue the atomic bomb. All right, before we jump into our reading, here's a little background information. First, during World War II, the United States funded the Manhattan Project. And this was a, a project with some of the world's best scientists in which they were trying to develop an atomic weapon. Next thing you need to know is that after Germany's surrender in the summer of 1945, Japan continued to fight and refused to accept the Potsdam Declaration, which outlined their conditions for surrender. Now, their conditions for surrender was an unconditional surrender, which, which meant that Japan, the, that Japan wouldn't have any rights to negotiate what happens after they surrendered. Now, Japan may have been ready for a ceasefire, which would have ended the war, but they were not ready to unconditionally surrender. And so that's a major part of this debate on the atomic bombs, because the United States and the Allied powers demanded unconditional surrender, and Japan refused. If the United States had accepted a ceasefire, what would have happened? So what you're going to do today is you're going to read short blurbs that give you information about the debate before the use of the atomic bomb. And you're going to act as a close advisor to President Truman and give him advice on whether on the advantages and disadvantages of using the atomic bombs in Japan. So let's read this together, and then we're going to do the first one together before you jump into the rest on your own. All right. What should Truman do? It is July 17th, 1945. You are a group of President Truman's closest advisors. For four year, years, the United States and its allies have been at war with the Axis powers. Germany and Italy have recently surrendered. Japan's cities have been gutted and hundreds of thousands of citizens killed as a result of American and British bombing raids. Yet the Japanese still refuse to accept the terms of unconditional surrender demanded by the allies. The Japanese insist on keeping their emperor. President Truman is aware, however, that the Japanese government was also hoping that the Soviets would remain neutral. Japan and the Russians had signed a non-aggression pact in April 1941. Secretly, American military personnel and scientists have been working on a new weapon, an atomic bomb. Yesterday, July 16, 1945, President Truman met with his British and Russian allies at Potsdam and was informed that the bomb had been successfully tested. This atomic bomb has 2,000 times the blast power of what was previously the world's most destructive bomb. Military leaders estimate that an invasion of, Jap of Japan's home island would result in 193,000 U.S. casualties, including 40,000 deaths. So, after reading this, you're going to think about the possible choice that's introduced on the slide. So this possible choice is we can invade Japan with American and British troops. And you're going to propose to Truman what the advantages of this are and what the disadvantages of this are. So for the advantages of invading Japan with American and British troops, 
we want to look back at our reading and remember that we are more powerful now. While the, when the war started, we had been losing battles in the Pacific Theater to Japan, but at this point, we have won several significant battles. So we could be successful and would most likely be successful in an invasion of Japan's home islands. But the clear disadvantage is that we would sustain significant casualties as a result of the invasions. So again, you're just going giving President Truman the advantages and disadvantages of the proposed possible choice. Next, you're going to do this on your own. Read the short blurb, which gives you a little bit more information, and add and advantages and disadvantages for the new possible choice. Your second possible choice is warn Japan very specifically of this terrible new weapon, threaten to use it if Japan doesn't surrender. You have four possible choices, so you're going to work through this for each one.